no love for the fakers If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakers If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up Do so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time, you're delirious Mysterious, because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains that last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah now that I've been put through hell I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement guys we're here we're live you're watching buster unmask and you know the drill you can catch us on youtube facebook x and most importantly genesis tv every single thursday night 10 p.m central time and you just seen it it's coming guys all the violence all the blood all the chaos and we're going to induct new blood we're going to find out who is k-a-w material here coming up very soon but tonight it's all about MCW, Mid-Southern Championship Wrestling in Osceola, Arkansas. And as you can see, I got my man right here with me right now, Mr. MCW Commissioner himself, Mr. Carl Clout. Carl. What's going on, Buster? Thank you for having me. Dude, man, I've been trying to get you here for a while, dude. It took us a while to get this thing scheduled where it fit both of us and we could get it done. And you're here, man. And we're going to talk all about MCW tonight, dude. Well, we definitely appreciate it. Uh, we got we got big things going on. Uh, we've come a long way in the last 20 years I've been there. Uh, we've come a long way. Uh, this is the new era of MCW. This year, 2024, mark it on your calendar. Remember I said it. Th this is... It, it, and the new era of MCW is here. It's definitely here. Look, before we get going good, Robert Alton's here with us. He said, get them call. Then we got Mark McGee's here with us. He said, good evening, brothers. Good evening, Mark. Good what evening, up, Mark? Robert. Glad you guys are here with us. Look, Carl, we're here to talk MCW, and it says it right above your head, man. Commissioner. Now, you've been commissioner of... Uh, a, a little while now, dude. You've you've kind of settled into this this new position. So talk to me about what it what it's like having all the commissioner duties fall on your shoulders now, dude. Uh I, I I've I've been commissioner for MCW one other time. Uh when I first come back. Uh of course I was a heel. Always easier being a heel. Uh, and, and, and now I just try to be neutral. I don't try to be baby face. I don't try to be a heel. Uh, I just try to, and a lot, all, not, I don't really try to give the fans what they want either. Uh, it's about just trying to be fair to everybody. Really? Man, let me ask you this. How do you manage that? Because like I had, I had Harry on about 
probably five or six months ago. Then I had David on after that, a couple months after that. And these two guys are back to going at it tooth and nail again. And you're kind of now, you're, you're the brother caught in the middle. You, you got to be the voice of reason. So talk to me about how it is dealing with Harry on one side, David on the other. Both of them in your ear and you right in the middle, man, having to hear both of them at the same time. Talk to me about how that, how you manage that, dude. Uh, it's hard, man. It's hard. Whether they're fighting, whether they're getting along, um, we're brothers. Uh, me and David, we, we seem like we've always had, you know, an easier time for me and him to get along. Uh, me and Harry, we're a year and a half apart. Uh, it, it, it just tends to be hell for us to get along. <laughs> I mean, it, it does. It does. We can at a point, And, I mean, man, it's hard. It's hard. Dude, I I know, dude, look, me and my brother, and we're 18 years apart. But, man, we've been fighting since I was 13. Me and him been fighting like right. He's been fighting me like I was a grown man since I was 13. So I understand how it is when you're dealing with your brother, man. And it's hard. Like you said, it's hard, man. Your brother's the quickest one to get on your fucking nerves immediately. You know that. Horribly. Horribly. <laughs> you, they know what to say to you. You know what to say to them. Uh, right. You know, it, it, it makes it difficult because when we're out there, uh, David's an asshole. Harry's an asshole. So it's kind of hard. Harry wants to do it his way. David wants to do it his way. So, uh, I mean, it, it's a pain in the ass. I mean, it really is. It, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. But, um, when it, when it comes down to it, uh, it, it, as far as what we're out there, we're doing what we do, uh, behind the scenes. Um, we, we just, even then, it's hard. If you've seen some of our chats, Buster, you'd be like, holy shit. Uh, <laughs> they're bad. I mean, even behind the scenes, I mean, you know, one day we're, fuck you, you're an asshole. The next day, it's the other one. Um, even behind the scenes, it's hard. It's it's hard when you're brothers. Um, but when it comes down to it, all three of us got, got the same number one goal. Uh we're, we're living our dream. Um, not many people can do that. Uh, we, all three of us, we, we grew up up North back when we, uh, were growing up WWE, WCW, you know, stuff like that. You, you could see them shows, but as far as independent shows, they didn't really have them when we were growing up up North. Well, they didn't they have them. They, they wasn't like they are now down here, dude. It, even to the mid to late 90s, there was still, even the late 90s, there was still only a few shows sprinkled out through here and there. There wasn't shows ever 15 minutes up the road like there is now. Uh, it makes a big difference when you have, I like having less shows because here's the thing. It weeds out a lot of the bad talent. If you don't have a, a hundred shows for guys to work, a hundred shows needing talent, a lot of these guys that shouldn't be in the ring, maybe maybe because they're not ready yet, maybe because they've just not been trained properly, they they don't get in the ring as often because the few shows are collecting the best talent. They want to use the very best talent, and I like it when there's a few a few less shows, but quality shows, dude. It's it's hard, really. It's hard because there are a lot of workers, but they don't want to fucking work anymore. It is so hard. Uh, I, I mean, it, it's hard. It's hard getting people to show up every week. Uh, it's hard getting people to come in. Um, it, it just, heck, 15 years ago, it wasn't like that. 10 years ago, it wasn't like that. But it's hard now. People got their shows, and that's that's where they stay. You know, if you want the good talent, you're going to have to come out of your pocket, or you're going to have, you know, you're going to have to do something because, they, they just, it, it seems like a lot of them don't want to venture out. A lot of them, hey, I'm in Tennessee, you know, I'm going to stay here. Or, hey, I'm over here. Um, they don't want to venture out. They don't, they they all claim they want to go to new companies. But it's hard, man. It's hard finding dependable people. It, it, it's, it's, it's horrible, man. It's horrible. 
Yeah, it's worse now when guys can just go. They don't care if they take your booking or not. They can go up the road five miles from home and take a book. And look, Eric Hayes says, see money, my brother. That's my boy, man. I love Eric, me some Eric Hayes. I got Eric coming on this uh, coming on in April, man. We're going to find out. We're going to chat with Eric a little bit, man. I know Eric's got a bunch of killer stories. Look, Mark McGee's with us. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was going to ask you about this, dude. So I'm glad Mark got brought it up. He said, are we going to address Chase McCoy accidentally putting a hole in the ramp? And what's the chances? What's the chance of Chase uh, signing around the hole and auctioning it off? So I, I seen the footage. I, I didn't see the footage. I seen the hole in a little caption. So talk to us about I, this, man. Uh, I was actually not there when it happened. Uh, I seen a picture and found out and was just like, Jesus, man. We we had this already to our ramp. We reinforced it, the ramp part. And now it looks like we're going to have to pull it all up, reinforce it. Because uh, I don't know. I don't know. We've had big people. We've never had an issue. Chase McCory runs down the damn thing and puts a hole in it. I don't know. I, so, I have no idea, man. <laughs> so uh, you, you wasn't there, but I know you had to heard the story. So was he running and fell and, and knocked the hole in it, or was he running and his foot went through it? No, he was running and his foot went through it. This is the story they're telling me. He was running and his foot went right through it. Damn. Look, Eric yeah. Hayes is back, and he says, I drive from ATL just to go to MCW, man. Eric's going to be at MCW coming up soon, ain't he? Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, he he knows whenever he comes up to this area, whenever he gets an itch, whenever he knows he's always got a home with us. He knows, that, hey, he can show up, not even be booked, and we'd, we'd find him a spot. I mean, we've known Eric Hayes and his family, his dad, his brother. We've known him a very, very long time. He always has a spot with us, man, always. So, so look, man, let's talk about MCW because, like you said, 2024 is going to be the new era of MCW. Uh, but MCW, man, 2023, y'all made a lot of changes, a lot of advancements, man. You're everywhere. You've got your own YouTube. You got TikTok. What else do you got? Y'all got everything now. So hey, much I can't even keep up with I'll, you, dude. Our, I just want to put over our TikTok team. They are the shit. Dude, no word of a lie. We have at least 10,000 people that watch our lives on Fridays. That's crazy, dude. That, I mean, we can show you screenshots, man. At least 10,000 people throughout the night view our lives. Man, it's it's... It's blown up. It's gotten crazy. Um, we also got a billboard. Also got a that, billboard. Uh, we also got one of our, uh, I would say, friends, but uh, he's not a friend. He, he's our family. We also got Derek King that's been helping out. Um, you know, been helping out with, with the booking and, and, you know, and stuff like that, which you, you could probably tell with some of the talent that's been coming in there, you know, out of right. Memphis, uh, out of Memphis. Um, yeah, he's been helping. So we're, we're really, we're really, uh, trying to do something with it. Um, we want to, want to get radio, uh, want to have a commercial made, um, we just, we just got to work out some kinks and, and, and work out some stuff before we just go head first into everything. We don't want to be like Johnny Dotson, go head first and end up belly up. Just Damn. saying. So we're going to start out, it's going to be one of them kind of days. Huh? You, you know, I, I, look, you know, even if he ain't watching, he's going to be like, man, that dude's going to be hurting that shit, man. He's going to well, be all over you, dude. He can kiss my ass. Hey, he blocked me. He blocked me on Facebook. The biggest mouth in the Mid-South, and he fucking blocked me. I love it. Damn. I love it. Get, getting hated, man. But y'all do, man. Y'all had a ton of all right. advancements, man. Like I said, y'all have improved the bill. I forgot about the billboard, but, man, that's cool as hell, man. When y'all put that up, I seen the the picture of it stuff 
that's freaking awesome, dude. Like I said, you know, and it's, it's been working. We've been packing the house, man. It's been working the last month. Ever since we got the billboard up and we've been doing some different stuff as far as booking and, you know, stuff like that and everything else, man. It's been, it's working. It's working. We're going to have to bring the bleaches back in before too long. Well, that, hey, that's a good problem to have, though. Yeah. That's a kind yeah, of, that, that's a, when when uh, we we've had we've had record breaking crowds since since uh, my brothers took it over and everything else here recently we've had right. bigger crowds than we've had in, in years man uh, football season we had a good crowd MCW football season you're lucky to get twenty thirty fans on a Friday night we right. had good crowds I mean we're we're doing a lot. A lot of good stuff. There's a lot of different stuff going on. Um, we go from from the last 20 years having five matches a night. Now we have six, seven, eight. So, and then we go, but, but we're wired up, you know, and we try to keep track of the times and, you know, stay strict on the times, you know, all that stuff. So the ref's wired up so we can kind of, we, we can kind of control things a little bit. So we're, we're trying, we're trying to, to step up. Uh, we want to, we want to find somebody. Hell, I don't know if your show can help. We want to find somebody um, on a production standpoint that can help our show progress. Uh, if there's anybody watching, anybody, you know, know anybody, uh, tell them to message us, MCW message us on Facebook, uh, me, either one of my brothers on Facebook, it, you know, we're, uh, we're wanting to step up production. We're wanting to, we're wanting to really step things up this year. Man, like I said, y'all been going at it good, man. Like, uh, you got a YouTube channel every Saturday morning, Defiance on YouTube, right? Yep. What time? Uh, I believe it's eight. Eight. Yeah, so, believe uh, so. But we we uh we we always got our it, it's always shared on the MCW page. So if you don't see it, then uh, you can always find it on there. Uh, our announcer Cornbread, uh, he it's actually what he does for a job. Um, what he does for us uh, in defiance and stuff, it, it's actually a part of his job. So uh, we're, we're trying some different things, man. We're trying to get our production up. We're trying to, you know, go up a level. Yeah, y'all got a bunch of different moving parts. Sometimes I don't see how y'all keep up with all that shit y'all got going on at once. But it goes back to the MCW team and the family, man. Like you said, even when you ain't seeing eye to eye, the one thing y'all all agree on is trying to make MCW a success. And, you know... That's that's all part of it, dude. Look, Mark McGee is with it. He said, if they ban TikTok like they're trying to, well, where will y'all push the MCW product that's on there now? Where will you push your product if, um, if you can't push it on TikTok? I, I, I don't really see them doing that, um, <laughs> especially, you know, TikTok's blown up. I mean, you know, when you get into stuff like that, you're talking about big money. And big money runs everything. Um, right. So I don't see it happening. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, I honestly don't know. We'll have to to step our YouTube up. Uh, we got Defiance, but we'll have to, our other YouTube channel, we'll have to step it up. Uh, talked about maybe doing an MCW podcast. Just an MCW podcast or something. Um, it, there ain't no telling, man. I mean, anything we have to do, we'll do it. I mean, there, there's plenty of us. We always got shows going on. Um, Harry's always booking us for shows. Uh, <laughs> and then a couple of weeks before the show, being like, hey, I don't have a flyer for this show. It's like, fuck, man. What, you should have said, reminded me a month ago. <laughs> uh, so, it, so it's hard. It's hard, and sometimes that causes arguments, too. Um, but it's it's hard. We always have a lot of shit going on. Uh, like Mark tree. Um, every time we, we go there, it's a better and better crowd. So, uh, we couldn't just go in there and then expect it to be a huge crowd, but we're building it up. We're working on it. And, uh, 
think we're going to stick in, in Mark Tree. We got several dates already already set up for Mark Tree. Uh, where we haven't announced them yet, but uh, yeah, yeah. But as far as the TikTok, I don't know. We're going to hate it because our TikTok is blown up, man. It really has. And you can watch our show live every every Friday. On TikTok? Yes. We How we go you, live every Friday. So can you all right? I, I, I just got on TikTok here about a month ago and I only put whatever reels and shorts on it, whatever. Uh but it only let me put like up to ten minutes. What if you go live, do you get the you get a No, you or? got you gotta earn all that stuff. Like 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 Damon and Amber. My my nephew and my his wife, my niece, um, they do that. They you had to earn it. You had to earn to be able to go live. You had to earn to be able to do the backstage stuff. Uh, he had to he had to produce so many flyers and reels and stuff, so many per day to earn all this stuff. So right. it it's like. When we were first on it, we could only do rails and stuff like that. We couldn't go live. But the more we built up our crowd and the more rails and pictures and videos and all this stuff you put on there, the more you earn. I actually like TikTok. Now, Snapchat, I, I, I got a Snapchat, but I can't figure that motherfucker out for shit, dude. I, I don't even... I might as well delete it because I don't really do nothing with it. I had one to communicate with my kids, and then I'm not on friends on Snapchat with any of them. So it sits there. Dude, that's, uh, that's I'm, the I'm getting thing. ready to start. I'm re getting ready to start up uh, Instagram for MCW. Uh, I've had difficulties here when I tried it, but I'm getting ready to start one up, uh, an Instagram for MCW. So that's also a place that they can go live from and stuff like that too. Yeah. I don't know anything about Instagram either. I just figured out TikTok, but I do like TikTok. It's simple. It's easy. Uh, you know, they don't, I, I ain't really had any hassle with TikTok. Hell, uh, uh, Twitter or X, man. I, I got, I never used my Twitter and, and then a couple months ago, when I started doing reels, I started loading reels every day on Twitter. And hell, they locked up my account for a, for a little while because because I get they called it unusual activity when it was just me posting <laughs> posting wrestling shit. But I don't really like it either. I'm still on there, and I post I post reels and shorts to it every day. But I've never done really, Twitter. I, it ain't my favorite, dude. It's not my it's not my favorite. I'll be honest with you, but I do like uh, TikTok, YouTube. I like YouTube. I ain't really had no issues with YouTube lately. YouTube's a, a outlet. You, it's, I guess it's like TikTok. You said you got to work your YouTube if you wanna want it to grow. Unless you're just lucky and you're one of them people that put something on that immediately a million people want to subscribe to you for. I'm not that lucky. You got to work your ass off at YouTube. Hey, you got to work your ass off on any social media these days, man. Uh, there's so much wrestling. There's so many podcasts. There's so much of it that that you have to that you 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 have to work your ass off. You got to give them something all the time to see. You got to like, man. We're constantly working on flyers and all this shit for Facebook, for TikTok, for where I mean. We're always having to work on something. Always. Right. We even right. went back. We even went in the dressing room and, and started painting the back dressing room. It's white now. We cleaned out all the shit, all the pictures, all that stuff. We Damn. painted up the dressing room, everything else. Make it clean it up a little bit. It was just dungy with the paneling. And, you know, it's the same paneling that's been in there fucking 30 years, you know. <laughs> It's been the same since it was built, so hell, I'm gonna have to come just check out the dressing room now, man. It's it you looks know? a lot cleaner, man. It's white. That's crazy. You know, we you know white ain't gonna never make it in a wrestling dressing room. Man. No, no, but we just wanted to brighten it up. If we gotta throw another coat on the son bitch, then we'll throw another coat on it. But just to brighten it up, it was brown, dungy, just right. Nasty. We wanted, you know, add some white, brighten it up. You know, it looks way better. You walk back there, you're like, holy shit. 
Hell, you ought to start giving each boy a, one of the, each one of your talents a marker and let them autograph the walls. Well, so see what we're going gonna what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna we we take gimmick pictures of everybody, anyways. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make eight by tens, do eight oh, by okay. ten pictures, and eight by ten pictures of any wrestler that comes in there doing eight by ten. Have them autograph it, and we're gonna hang them on the wall. So, cool. so if somebody comes into MCW, we'll take a picture of them. We'll we'll make a picture and we'll put it on the wall and fill up the dressing room with a bunch of wrestlers that that come in and out of there. You never know who will make it. You know, you never know right. some of these guys. You know, ten years down the road, they wrestling on the big stage. We're like, ah, we got his picture when he first started. You know, right, cool man. shit, you know. man. Just. Like it's like a little deal in the back. People can go and look through and see the workers that have been there, you know, that wrestle there, you know, et cetera, you know. Right. Look, uh, Eric Hayes says, I want to call out the hardcore homo at MCW. And we're going to talk about uh right, right here in a little bit, man. Y'all, y'all crowned a, not just crowned, you crowned the first ever hardcore champion, but it's a brand new championship too. That was, uh, the, in the quest for gold tournament this year, talk to me about this new hardcore title. Since Eric, uh, Eric's talking about uh, the hardcore homo, let's talk about this hardcore championship a little bit. There, Carl. um, MCW, like we have not had a hardcore title. Um, you see it in death matches, stuff like that. But most companies, they, they veer away from that hardcore stuff now. nowadays. If you notice, like, I, I don't know too many companies around here that actually have a hardcore title. You know, I right, don't. I don't either no more. And uh, it was just like everything else, just something new, something, you know, to step it up, something exciting, you know, Hey, whether, whether, whether we like it or not being hit in the head with a fucking chair or not, the fans like that. Right. They like it when you go out there and you're slammed in thumbtacks. Cause they're like, Holy shit, man, that hurts. That's, that's fucking real. You know, like, right. like you, when you go out there and you watch a hardcore match, it like, you could watch a match before that be like, oh, this shit's fake. That hardcore match comes on, and granted, they have to they they have to fucking be be good at what they're doing anyways. But a hardcore match go on, you're getting hit in the head with a stale chair, and you're being slammed in thumbtacks, and people see them sticking in your elbows, the back of your right. head. It 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 creates a new experience. It, it's People want to see people come to wrestling. They like the entertainment, but people come to wrestling because they want to see somebody beat the shit out of somebody else. Right. They I mean, that's what it is. It's violence. violence. Entertainment, but it's violence. What better way to give some of these people what they want than, than introducing a hardcore title again? Right. I'm with you. Look, Eric says you got to have a thousand followers uh, on TikTok before you can go live. Damn, I'm a long way from that. I got like 89. Yeah. Man, I'm yeah, way I, I don't even know what I got. I just learned like two weeks ago, I just learned how to fucking how to repost or share share reshare a damn video, man. A real. I just learned it like last week, man. I'm like, fuck, how do you do this? <laughs> Dude, I, I get my kids to show me. That's the quickest way to to get it done and, and to learn how. They can do all that shit. Look, Mark McGee's back. He said, I'll definitely be following y'all on Instagram as soon as the page is up. He's back again. He says, uh, I don't know how or who <laughs> to contact. It would be cool seeing MCW on Pluto TV. Uh, uh, that's, that's another thing. Um, I was trying to get the ball ro rolling on that to get it on Roku TV. Um, there was a company... When, when I was Googling the hell out of shit, Google's the best thing sometimes, but sometimes it's the fucking worst. Right. Um, Googling it, and I reached out to a company that that's what they do. You pay them. They, um, with, with a wrestling show, they were probably like, no, I'm staying away from that. I, I couldn't get them to, re I couldn't get them to respond. I couldn't get them. Um, I looked up some stuff and, Man, there's just so much shit on, on whatever it was that I pulled up. There was just pages and pages and pages of shit. And you had to put your bank info in that and all that. I'm like, I don't know much about it. 
at this point, but I'm not just going to be like, all right, here's my bank info. Right. Um, right. We would we would love to. I've been trying to figure out a way to get it on Roku, uh, Roku TV. Uh, I've been I've been trying. Um, like I said, we're we're a small company. Me and my brothers, we weren't born down here. Uh, we weren't born into a wrestling family. We weren't, you know, or none of that. So everything that we do, we're learning. I mean, we're learning this. We never ran a company. My brothers never ran a company. Um, so we're learning all this stuff. Uh, would love to get it on Roku. Pluto would love to get it on TV. Absolutely. I've tried to, to figure it out. I've tried, but I don't know what avenues to take. That's again, somebody care to help me out. My name's Carl Clapp. Message me on Facebook. I would love some help. So are you looking to just get the MCW product on the streaming network on like, like Pluto, Pluto, or are you wanting to start your own looking into trying, maybe starting your own streaming network? Um, we, we, I don't care that if it's on another streaming network, um, we just like, we we're talking, you, you know, you've been there. We've got, we, we, we want to put our weekly show on there, but we also, we have so many fucking tapes of, of the last like when Moondog owned it and everybody was right. coming through there, you know, we have so many of these tapes that we would like to be able to put some of these matches on there. Oh, look at the Moondog's hair. Look at this, this. There's a lot of great talent. Uh, when Dude. I first moved down here, the Moondog owned it. When I first moved down here, it was a packed fucking house. It was an exciting show that everybody could work. I mean, Ron McClarity, them Cowboy, Lightning. I mean, Seth Knight was there. Fucking dickweed, but he could work. You know, my brothers. I mean, it was a hell of a show, man. And we we got all these tapes where it used to be, you know, it used to be recorded every week. And we have all these tapes. You got a lifetime, a literal lifetime the fucking tapes, man. There, there's no shit. I, dude, you could do like I used to do. You could take them tapes and break them down match for match, and you guys would never run out of Matt content to put on YouTube or whatever. No, no, you did it like that, dude. Even if you did whole shows, you could probably go for years and years, uh, never missing a week with a brand new whole show every week. But I, I think it'd be smarter to break it up because you're gonna get more views when it broke up. Yeah, you know, but we I, we definitely would love to p get it on something, man. I mean, would love it. Would love it. If somebody can reach out, somebody knows how can, except for Johnny Dotson, don't fucking reach out. I don't want to hear shit from you. Have you thought about Genesis, man? See, I don't know nothing about it. Dude, when, when we get through here, me and you will talk. When, when, I, when the show ends... You stay on with me, and me and you'll have a chat about it, man. It, uh, hey, man, anything would help. I mean, it no, couldn't dude, hurt. I, couldn't hurt. I, th I think it would be perfect for. I think it would be perfect for y'all, and I think y'all would be perfect for it, man. Uh, look, we got Mark back, and he says most hardcore titles are in the north, like New York and New Jersey and Texas uh, anymore. And and he's right. We don't used to. They were everywhere around. Everywhere. Here, it kind of kind of died off and, and you don't see them as much look eric's back he says uh i was cruising for pain's test dummy long enough that hardcore doesn't bother me there you go Mark's hey, back. that's go how ahead, i was ahead. broke into this fucking business motley and david motley's done broke everybody in the fucking business i think man, man. i love i love motley to death man i rode the roads with him for years man i could never begin to thank him enough for what he's done for me never right, i mean I, when i broke out uh, actually I, I mean i wrestled a couple times before that but when i really started started me and harry uh, harry was booked at peppermint pond uh, and right. Motley and da Motley and David were booking, and Motley's like, "Kid, you're working tonight. 
You're starting tonight. I looked at him. I was like, what? He's like, you're fucking working. I was like, uh, he's like, seriously, you're, you're wrestling. I was like, all right, cool, cool, man. Uh, I was so fucking nervous. And I used to do like like at the the hay uh, barn used to do shooting star presses off of, off a of bale of hay, right. and all that shit. And I went to do it at the Peppermint Pond, and Ron Ron Rage, it was Ron Rage, it was Motley, my brother David, uh, and, and like some other guys, some other big ass guy. Um, I went to do the shooting star press off the top rope to the outside of the ring. And dude, I didn't spin it all the way. They caught me, but yeah, yeah, it was horrible. It was my like pretty much my first match, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do it." And I never got my footing right when I went to jump off, and I fucked up. And they call it the crappy flap. <laughs> That's what they always <laughs> called it, man. Molly, Ron, all of them, man. They were like, "Yeah." <laughs> But that that's where I learned a lot of my shit. Motley and my two brothers. Yeah, Motley. I don't think Motley. It ain't I don't think. I know Motley don't get the credit he deserves around here uh, for all the guys he's helped and all the guys he's trained or kind of took under his wing, man. Uh, it, it's just, it's ridiculous, man. But look, Mark's back and he said, too bad it wouldn't be cost effective putting out DVDs, matches of the past shows uh, and putting them on sale. Look, if y'all, here's the thing. It ain't something that, you know, I don't think that you could sell them on a mass market, but I do believe like y'all, if y'all made a, like a volume, season volume of MCW as collector's items, things, DVDs, I believe that y'all could sell enough of them right, right there at the home base to be, to make your money. I do, dude. I Because here's the thing. I'm old school. Everything now is digital. But if I buy something, I want something I can hold in my motherfucking hand, Carl. I don't want no shit in the, I don't like shit in the air that's just invisible. Look, I don't like money nowadays because it's all in, in, in numbers on a computer. You don't really hold it in your hand no more. I don't like my money to be invisible. And I used I to be like one of them guys that have to be <laughs> sitting waiting for somebody to use the debit card scan. I'm like, nobody fucking carries cash anymore. Guess what? I don't carry cash anymore. <laughs> I, do. I open I a either. bank account and I don't carry cash anymore. I can't Swipe just card. enough cash. I can't just enough cash in my pocket in case I need a little cash. And that's about it. And I, I never need cash. But I, I don't like shit I can't hold, man. My Look, for Christmas, we got my son a PlayStation 5. And it's one of them where it's all digital. No, no fucking yes. games. And I, I didn't know this shit, dude, until after. till probably a month after Christmas. And, and we're talking about, I was we was in Walmart, me and the wife, and I was talking about maybe buying him a game. And then, then she drops it on me that this game don't hold real games. It's all digital, and if we're going to get him one, we got to buy this card, and then he's got to fucking download it or whatever. And I'm like, I'm like, huh? I'm like, uh-uh, now. So we could have – and here's the thing. Apparently, you could have got one that did it all, was digital, and held the cartridges. And I'm like, well, why the fuck didn't we get that one? You know what I mean? I, 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 dude, I, it's hard, man. I hate spending money on shit. It's been new see. age, man. Whew, it's rough, dude. It's rough. Well, look, MCW, here's something I want to talk about. Something that I think a lot of people a year ago never thought they would see happen. And that's Luke Justice showed back up at MCW during Harry and David's casket match. Am I right? Is that is that when he showed up and, and, and attacked Harry once again? So talk to me about Luke Justice being back at MCW when, like I said, I don't think nobody, even you, I don't think thought that would happen, dude. Talk to me um, about this and, and, and how it come about. And, and and talk to me about when he run in, when he showed up that night, what was your first instinct, man? Um, Actually, the night he came, the 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 first night he came, um, I believe it was the night of the altercation, it was... It was, uh, he actually had messaged me and, uh, and sent me a voice message, um, wanted to come pay his respects for Smitty. 
Um, it was right after Smitty died. He wanted to come pay his respects for, uh, for Smitty. And it was like a heartfelt message. And uh, I sent it to Harry. And I told Harry, I was like, man, if we're doing this shit, we got to let stupid shit go. I mean, we got to. No, I'm the hothead. I couldn't stand <laughs> Luke Justice. I was the one wanting to fucking fight him. I was the one that, you know, was back and forth and. I was just like, dude, they got to let go of the shit, man. Life's too fucking short. We have all these workers dying and everything else. I'm like, man, is it really worth it? So what? Right. He was a fucking acting like a little snot-nosed punk-ass kid and was running his mouth and was trying to hurt our show. He didn't hurt it. I'm like, just let it go. So then it was okay for Luke to walk through the doors. Right. I was, me and Harry were walking around it, and Luke called Harry a bitch. And, 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 and he, he tried to smack Harry, Harry tackled him into the chairs and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. So, right. um, me, he, he's a, he's a talented kid. If he can get over trying to get that, the, the wrong kind of heat. Which, I mean, some people, you know, like fucking Johnny Dodson will tell you there's no wrong kind of heat, but he's full of shit. That's why nobody likes him and nobody will work for him. Um, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, Carl. Luke, uh, Luke, Luke is hellaciously talented. I, 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 and I've told Luke this. I think Luke needs to stop worrying about trying to promote shows and book shows. And if Luke would worry about just being a talent, I think Luke could be highly sought after around this this area. I think he he could get all the bookings he wanted if he could keep himself out of the heat. It's as simple as that, you know. And it, it's hard. It, well, it's the whole thing. It, it, and 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 Johnny Dodson again, perfect example though. He come out and don't don't nobody fucking know who Johnny Dodson is anymore. I mean, keep it real. People that would watch Channel 5 and people been around the area, they know Johnny Dodson. He come out, open this show. Oh, y'all suck. All this, all all this. Uh, the, uh, you're supposed to believe in your show. You're supposed to put it over like the best show. But you got to be fucking humble at the same time. He killed it. He killed his own show before he ever even started it. And just I, like I, I Luke. Think- with his heat, you can get heat without getting the fucking bad heat. I mean, right. you don't have to. You, you I, I don't know. It, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, you can get heat as far as you're a heel. <laughs> you can get heat. But this is the wrong kind of heat. And that's what Luke Luke has. Either you love him to death or you can't stand him. You think he's a little snot-nosed fucking punk. <laughs> it's Me, I'm moment. okay with him. Me, I let shit go. I'm okay with it. He's working at, our, at MCW. Fine. If it's good for business, it's good for business. When it ain't good for business, then it won't be good for business and he won't be there. I mean, it's just the whole thing. It was. It, it, it's a business. And, I mean, he's dependable. I mean, he's dependable. He's dependable on our Saturday shows when he ain't got some shit going on Um, and and shit like that, man. Uh, I deserve, I really believe everybody deserves a second chance. And uh, I mean, he's got a second shot and he's with us. He's part of the team, you know? Yeah. Luke can be a big asset to any show he wants to be a big asset to. It's as simple as that. He's really talented, man. And I mean, his biggest problem is he's still so young. He's been in this business so long, and he's still just a kid, basically. I mean, what is he, 23 years old? Yeah, he's is he even that old. He's a baby. Yeah, yeah, he's still a baby, man, and he thinks like he'll, – he'll mature up over the next few years. I think he's already matured a little bit over the last couple of years. You know, I do, man. I, everybody makes changes. Look uh, – uh, Mark's back and he said, I like hard copies above digital. What happens when the web goes down and we lose everything? My thoughts exactly, man. That's what I'm talking about. What happens when it all goes down and all your bank account it, it just gets erased and it never even existed no more, man. 
Hey, it's gonna happen, but I mean, how do you you can't keep it from happening? This is the new uh, technology. I mean, we all have to use it. I mean, look, uh, Tim Davis says, "Who loves the clouds?" Old Jim Davis. <laughs> Hey, I love me some Tim Davis, man. Anytime that motherfucker was booking, me, me and my brother David were, were probably one of the first people he called. Every time he booking, hey, what y'all doing? Be like, where are you booking for? Where, where, where you want, when you want us to come in? I love Tim Davis, man. I gave him shit because I was always the asshole and David was always the the good guy. But uh Tim Davis, that's our boy, man. We've known him a long time. I love him to death. Yeah, Tim ain't got no fucking sense. He's the one that actually booked me in the film for uh, EIW when I started filming, dude. Uh, he was doing the book in there. Look, Mark's back, and he says, the Serpent versus Luke Justice feud has been hot. And and I hadn't seen, like, whole matches, but snid bits I had seen of it. I thought the same thing, man. What did Jared Jarrett say? Personal issues draw money. And yeah, well, well, that was like me and Harry's personal issues when I come back. Right. That was the whole thing. They were like, you want to come back? And all that shit, David and Harry, I'm like, and then they were talking about working against Harry. I'm like, I'm like, man, they're like, oh, make it, make it seem real. Like everyone, I'm like, said, I said, I'm not going to have no problem finding fucking words. I'm not going to have no problem finding shit to dog your ass out about. Right. And me and Harry's feud went on for months. I beat the shit out of him with a belt week after week after week after week after week. But that you was after you... my hip surgery, too. A year after my hip surgery, we had a steel cage match. Damn, man. Wrestling. Wrestling and family feuds, man. They kind of go together, don't they? They kind of yeah. synonymous with each other. There's Look, nothing man. better. There's nothing better than than the a real feud outside of wrestling becoming part of the show is right. nothing better because if you're fighting with somebody, you have bad words for them. You think they did you wrong. They think you did them wrong. It makes for good entertainment. And then the matches are even better because I was so pissed and I really beat his ass. I really did. And I probably wouldn't have done it as bad if I wasn't, pissed at him you know what i'm saying when you're mad you're just like yeah all right let's fuck each other up let's lay it in there let's you know i i year after my hip surgery and i think i took five six bumps off the top rope and then took a sunset flip power bomb off the top of the cage to finish right. the match so it was it was some shit man so look eric's back he said i had the same issues of being a young guy in the business forever eric He's a guy who grew up in the business, so he's a perfect example of he, – he probably understands Luke 100% because Eric's been around the business since he was born. Luke's been around the business since he was born. Look, Tim's back, and he said, I love you, my brother. I don't know if he's talking. I'm assuming he's talking to you because uh, he don't love me all that much. Sometimes he loves me. Sometimes he don't, Carl. Yeah, I'm the same. Hey, right? trust me. When he's having to book me and he's having to deal with me, he don't love me. You know, when we're cool, but we're not working together, of course he loves me. Because it was always like that. Sarge O'Reilly, that's another one. With, uh, UCW. We'd always go in there. David would be in there talking to him and shit. David would come out. Bro, I'm like, what? He said, this is what he wants us to do. I'm like, no, fuck that shit. It don't make sense. <laughs> Here comes me right in the office. Sarge, we're not fucking doing that shit, man. It makes no goddamn sense, man. We're not doing it. All right, whatever. Do what the fuck you want then. <laughs> David would always do that, man, because David wasn't the confrontational one. David would get the, you know, get the, the deal, you know, and then he'd bring it to me. Bro, he wants us to do this. That don't make no fucking sense, man. I'm like, hold on, hold on. Going at Sarge, no, fuck that shit. We ain't doing that, man. Hell no, we are not doing that. Well, it like, might uh, help if, if David come to you with some enthusiasm, like it was some good no, shit. Hey, man, no, you, you got to hear this, man. No, because I would tell David, fuck that. We're not doing that shit, bro. We're not doing that. No, hold on. Because the whole thing is... <laughs> People will book you and have you doing 
anything that they want you to do. They don't, they don't book you. They don't have you do shit necessarily for your, you, for your team. When we were like, when we were brought into UCW, when we were brought into UCW, he always, Sarge always brought me and David in there and me and 911. They always brought us in there to work with the newer talent. You know, the oh. trainees, you know, and all that shit and everything else. They always had us come in to work with the new talent because we put them over like a million bucks. We don't have these big fucking egos. We'll, we'll put them out there. We'll go. We've always been told you give them too much. You give them too much. It's like, no, we didn't. It's our job to fucking put them over as the vets. It's our job to make them look like fucking superstars. Um, so it was always like nobody ever looked out for us the way we did. So I had to be the asshole. I'm like, no, nah, fuck that, bro. We ain't doing that shit. Well, I probably did it to, to Tim Davis a bunch of times, too. That's the wrestling business. So at the end of the day, you got to protect who you are and, and your character and whatever. You're standing in the business. Look, they used to want to flip. We quit in Osceola one night because they wanted me and Motley to wrestle each other. Dog in the fonts did. And we were... I, tag team all over KAW had been for a, almost a year and, and just out of nowhere they wanted us to work each other and we we didn't leave but we didn't do the match man and it just sometimes you gotta you gotta look out for yourself it's as simple as that man. well at that same thing UCW uh Sarge had come to us one week well talked to David wanted us not to be called the devil's rejects Wanted us not to be called. There was there was some fans. There were churchgoers going fans, and there was like ten of them. Right. And they said they wouldn't come back if we came out as the Devil's Rejects. I was like, no, fuck that, Sarge. I'm like, hell no, we're not changing our name. We're not. And he's like, well, and you can't be called six 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 no more. I said again, Sarge, fuck you. We're not doing it. Not changing our name for the, the. We ain't letting some fans tell us what we can come out as. I said, it's not like we're coming out here sacrificing fucking goats and shit, man. It's a gimmick. Uh, so needless to say, after we dropped the belts, he didn't need us for a little while longer. Oh, I'll call y'all when I need you again. Sarge told y'all that yet later that night, he come out in his panties and had people put in a money thong. in his drawers. <laughs> yep, right. in a fucking thong. His fat ass in a thong showing his ass to everybody. These same church-going people didn't mind that their underage kids were getting to see a grown man's ass, but we were called the devil's rejects, and oh my God, the building was going to burn down. Dude, you know the booker always wins, man. The booker always wins. No matter so we weren't changing our shit for nobody. I mean, that, that was it. Okay, look, I still love you, but we'll see you the next time you need us. Look, Tim Davis said Carl was the boss. Eric Hayes says, look, he says, I always like booking the rejects versus Team Redneck as long as the heels were chasing the faces. He says that. He says that. Dude, fuck you, Eric. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. But the whole thing was, though, when we worked for his daddy, Eric Eric and Chris's daddy, dude, we worked them for months and months and months. We, we won the belts, had them for like a week or two weeks. They took them back. We chased them. We were the heels. They were the baby face. And we chased them for months for the belt. Money make no fucking sense, does no fucking sense at all. But the only <laughs> sense it makes is because the two boys, his daddy, own the show. I love the daddy to death, but we chased Eric and Chris Hayes, they were the baby face. And this was me and 187, too, back when we were tagging up. Me and 187 chased them for months and had gimmick matches, whatever it was, and chased them for months and months for the belts. They had you know, the belt the whole time. Here's the thing. Believe it or not, Moondog would do that. Moondog would get the belts on a baby face, the fonts, lightning, cowboy, somebody, cowboy and lightning as tag teams. And and literally the heels would chase them belts, man. And, and for somehow it always seemed to work out for him, man. The people always came. But to me, it just didn't make no sense. It's There's no heat there. 
No there, heat there's there, no man. fucking heat there. I, I'm with you on that one. Look, Tim Davis says, I love you, Buster. Love you, Tim, man. You gonna buy me a meal, man, and then run out like you did on Titanic, man. You heard about that, right? Fuck Titanic. Damn, it's getting heat all, all the way around today. Well, look, Carl, we, I got a few graphics. I got two graphics. I got a graphic of the, the brand new hardcore champion. I'm gonna pull it up and let's talk about this match. And I got a little snippet of footage so people can get an idea about what this hardcore division at MCW is about and what it's like to be part of it, dude. Let me get this here pulled up, and we'll talk about this match coming up. And this match is this Friday night, right, Carl? Yes. Okay, we got uh, the authentic Ray, 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 Ray Ivy. He's the brand new uh, MCW hardcore champion versus Zach Daniels now. Ray Ray just won this belt. He won the quest for the gold, right? Yes. And and he's the champion now facing Zach Daniels. Look, we're going to talk about this match a little bit, uh, Carl. But before we do, I got about 50 seconds of video. Let's look at it so people can kind of get an idea of what this hardcore division's about. The for MCW, but it, hardcore is not new to MCW, but you were talking about them thumbtacks earlier, man, in your back, in your elbows. They and suck. Are, they hurt more pulling them out than they do going in. Man, I, I ain't doing them, man. I'll be honest with you. I ain't rolling around in fucking thumbtacks. I'm just... I have. Not, I ain't doing it, man. I'm too... I might have done it with... If it was a thing when I was young, I probably would have done it at least once just to try it, but I'm too old for that shit, man. But talk to me about this matchup because, like I said, Ray Ray's a brand new champion. This is a brand new division at MCW, brand new title. And Zach Daniels, here's the thing. He's he's kind of brand new too, right? He, he, um, he, Zach, Zach Daniels is, is – is, is, he's a trainee. He's right. a trainee. He's been working for a while, but he's still – he's still learning. He's still – he's a trainee. Um. But I don't know, man, for some dumbass reason, that's the kind of shit he wants to do. And and it's just and he's doing it with Ray. Ray is Who loves it. He loves that shit. That shit don't bother Ray. That that Ray loves that kind of shit. So uh I, Ray's gonna break Zach in. I mean it, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know why Zach want to do that shit. Like me, I'm too old for that shit. Don't hit me in the head with a chair. That shit hurts. It hurts even more now. Um, right. But yeah, Ray Ivy. I mean, Ray Ray. He he's the man when it comes to hardcore, man. It's gonna take a special kind of character to take that belt off him. Right. Look, Eric Hayes says something happened to us in Osceola. We got over with the crowd and then had to turn heel. To work East Coast. Hey, I just want to say this. I love you, Eric, and you and your brother are over his baby face. But you can, you can go to any other company, but you are not going to be come to Osceola and be more over than the East Coast Bad Boys. Sorry, that's our house. I mean, that's, that's just we've been there. 20, 20, I've been there 20 years. My brother's 25 years or so. That's our fucking house, man. Uh, we, some of these people that are there now, hell, their grandparents used to come watch us and mothers, and now their kids are adults bringing their kids. Um, where we, we give this business 
everything, man. Um, right. We do absolutely everything from benefits for people, uh, birthday parties. Um, pe people know us. People love us. Uh, when you come into MCW, you're, you're family. You know, we, we want you to feel like that. Because, I mean, there's been, like, crowd members. I mean, we do stuff with people all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, but he, he could try, but you can, and it, and this was with, against me and Harry back in my prime and, and probably Harry's prime. There wasn't nobody more over than me and him. Right. He said, we noticed that when we had to turn heel after three weeks and, but he's like that sometimes, man, it's almost blasphemy. If you're going to come into MCW and think you're going to be a, a more over than the clouds. Am I right? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. They were good looking. Well, Chris was good looking. Eric's an ugly motherfucker. But, but they were they were over. But at the same time, like we didn't have a lot of tag teams. Baby, baby right. match. Yeah, you know. Look, Mark McGee's back. He said, "Hell, it hurts just watching watching hardcore matches, seeing someone take a chair shot." And you know, here's the thing. Which I know is a lot of uh, with the concussions and stuff over the past fifteen or twenty years, but man, I don't see many headshots with chairs anymore like we used to do them. Man, they used to be rampant. Like, I mean, it used to do them all the time, all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you put your fucking hand up, you got whacked again. Right. That's why you don't get whacked again if you put your hand up these days because you're protecting yourself. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, you didn't put your hands up for nothing. If you put your hands up and it was Ron McClarity, what the fuck is he going to do? He's going to fucking bust you open. I mean, he's going to fuck you up. He's gonna... You didn't put your hands up. You didn't. But now you do. <laughs> well, hell, man. We... <laughs> Look, it's just lucky ain't none of us. Jesus Christ, Eric. Yeah. Okay, Eric, I get it. Okay. Okay. So you look, still you weren't as over as we were. Okay, but I get it. So you mentioned tag team matches, and I got another graphic of a tag team match y'all got coming up this Friday night, dude. It's a big time tag team match, man. You mentioned this guy earlier, earlier, Derek King, man. He ain't alone right now. He's got Ray Ray Sanders, uh Ray Sanders. Sanders coming in with him, man, and these two guys have, they recently just come off of a, a, a nice run as Memphis Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Twisted Steel are the champions, right? No. L.A. Hustlers are the champions. Oh, I thought this was a title match. No. Nope. So is this a number one contenders match? Uh, well, Derek and, Derek and uh, Connor have been working an angle for the heavyweight title. But dude being the jackass he, did, he is, he turned on Derek and is now back with his butt buddy, Connor. And wow. they've, been, they've been doing dirty shit to Derek, so Derek brought in his partner. And, and the thing about Derek and his partner, I mean, they just had a little mishap on TV here a week or so ago, man. Derek made a miscue and, and kicked kick Ray in, right in the face, dude. So do you think these two guys are going to actually be able to tag? Because, you know, here's the thing. It, obviously, i seen it. I don't think it was on purpose at all. But as a wrestler, it plants seeds in your head. When something like that happens, especially if it happens to you. So have you seen any any decision between Derek and Ray at all? Um, no, we re we really haven't. Um they they've they tagged up uh I think a couple of weeks ago they had a tag match too. Um, but no, there there really hasn't been nothing. Derek, he's not that guy. Derek speaks very highly of Ray. Uh right. very highly. That's his guy. You know, and he'll tell you that, you know, raise my guy. So I don't think there'll be any problems. I think they're going to take it to dude and Connor. And I don't think there's going to be any, any doubt who, who walks away with the W in that match. Yeah, man, that's a lot of experience. I mean, obviously 
Derek's got more experience than everybody else in that match combined by himself. Even even his partner, he's got more experience. Well, Connor, than all, all Connor and Dude are out of the MCW training too. Uh, Serpent, Serpent trained them. And Connor, man, uh, I hadn't seen him in a while, and I know he hadn't. He was gone for a little while, but but I seen where he come back. Man, this dude's always in phenomenal shape, man. Always. Yeah, he, he actually does bodybuilding, bodybuilding contests and stuff. Uh yeah, he he he's back. He's been back uh last few months. He's been there every week, you know, stuff like that. So he's back. He he just he got a lot of stuff going on. His family does a lot of shit. They go out of town, you know, stuff like that. So I mean, but he's back right now. He's been he's been back the last few months. So life moves so fast now, man. Everybody's always. got a lot of shit going on. Always, dude. Look, Mark's back. He said, "I've never taken bumps in the ring, but I've taken my bumps from cattle for twenty nine years." Damn, Mark, what are you, man? Are you a rodeo guy or what, dude? Man, what? I've always been small, so all the guys have been cattle to me, knocking my ass over. <laughs> Look, Eric says I still love you, Carl. And I always love you too, Eric. So look, Carl, we get we finna have to start winding it down, but you mentioned your help earlier, and I know it, it what about six months ago now? Has it even been that long that you had had some work done on your neck? So talk to me about how how that's going, man, and how you're feeling, dude, and how your recovery's been. Um wow. Be honest with be honest with you, man. Uh, my recovery and shit, my healing was so easy. Um, it, it it was so easy, and that's no joke, man. It was so easy. I was up walking around the next day. I mean, walking around, I was eating eating food, not Jello pudding. I was eating real food, having right. the shit stuck in my throat because my throat was swelled <laughs> up. But I was eating that shit, man. <laughs> Uh, it was a couple times, there was a couple times I was eating and it felt like it was lodged in my throat and then everybody staring at me and stuff kind of started freaking me out. So I had to go in the bathroom and be like, y'all leave me alone for a second. Let me, you know, um, but man, it was so easy. My, my, my surgery, uh, I was dreading it, man. I was scared shitless. Uh, I was like, I seen my brothers have this surgery. Um, man, it wasn't shit. Uh, I went back to work two and a half weeks after surgery. I was back to work. Um, and I ain't done no physical therapy, nothing else. But honestly, it's it's it really been hard staying out of the ring. Um, I was so scared of this surgery. And, and, man, I was just like, yeah, fuck that. I know how I feel now. Um, days leading up to surgery, months leading up to surgery. Uh, every time I would take a bump. It was always in my head. It was, it was always. I knew I was having surgery. I knew it. And it was always in my head. What if it's this time? What if it's this time? And I caught myself, kept on throwing my hands down. And my hands and, and elbows and shit were hitting before my back. And uh, seen a couple of videos where I was like, oh, you know, I, I was just, I was right. fucking, I was so scared, man. It was always in the back of my head. Um, that's why I would like, like when I made my announcement at MCW, I was like, you know, I don't know if this is, I'm gone forever. I said, but the way I feel now with always being scared and in the back of my head and everything else, I'm like, I don't know if I'll be able to do it after surgery. I mean, I was really, I, I was scared every time I went out there. I was like, every time I, I bumped or knew I had to bump or was taking this or and I was just like I, I would just close my eyes and just tense up and you know I was landing wrong and I was hurting right. my elbows and so uh I don't know man I just don't I still feel like I got more in me man <laughs> I like I watch some of this wrestling and you know see my brothers out there and watch my son out there and my nephew <laughs> out there and man i just i don't feel like i should be done man i just i don't feel no i know i can't go out there and do all the high flying and all the stupid shit i i used to do and always did and um 
but I don't know, man. I just don't feel like I should be done. I just don't feel like it's my time, man. I just, I don't know, man. So look, Carl, uh, wrestling on demand. They said, I have a question for Carl. If you could have one more match, who would you like to face at MCW and what kind of match? Excellent question, dude. Who would you like to face if you went one more time and what kind of match, Carl? Um, <coughs> uh, you know, honestly, I've, I've wrestled everybody, almost everybody at MCW. Um, the one match I, I, I'd probably have to say is my son, man. I got to tag up against him, but I, I never got the chance to work him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I got to be on the same side as him, you know, and I got to share that with him. But, uh, you know, I would like to see if he can really go, man. I would like to see, you know, really what he can do. Hey, he comes from good stock, man. Man, he's okay. he's gonna be better than I ever ever dreamed about being, man. Him and my ne him and my nephew DJ, they like, man, they just they gotta act for it. You know, everybody's like, right. oh, that person has the it factor. That person, these two boys, man, give them the next five years, they'll be the best in the area. I guarantee right. it. I guarantee right. it. Once they turn eighteen, they're gonna be. I'm going to be driving them to New York and all these other places. They got to hit 18 first. But uh, my son's dream is to wrestle in every state in the United States. And I'm going to see to it that that happens. Nice dream, man. I like it, man. You know, I had, but I don't care if I got a foot to bill. I'm going to see that. I'm going to see that it happens before I die. I had both of them boys on 30 minutes or less. And dude, I, I, uh, Super respectful uh, young men. Uh, they care about the business, man. They, they take it seriously. They got a bright future ahead of them, dude, which all kind of helping them navigate the waters. man. That, and see, that's the thing about pro wrestling. It, it's much easier if you've got someone in the business, e even if it's just someone you can go to for advice to kind of help you steer these waters means a whole lot than just having to go out there like a pinball and kind of learn everything on your own by making mistakes. That's kind of how I learned, dude. Th them two boys got a bright future. Look, Mark's back, and he said, dairy and beef farming. Okay, that's super cool, Mark. Need to send me some food, man. I love meat, man. I'm a meat Hell meat, yeah. I'm, I'm a dinosaur, <laughs> I'm a dinosaur, you love man. meat, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no take hey, that hey, back. you just said it. <laughs> I, love, I love beef. No, hold on. We ain't saying that either, man. Hold on. <laughs> just, just rewind all that, Mark. You he loves to eat. <laughs> I love to eat. There you go. I love to eat. Look, Mark says, uh, Second generation claps really stepped up and are slaying it. Proud of them boys. Uh, wrestling on demand is back too. Let me get a uh, said all <laughs> wrestling on demand says all claps suck, but those two young guys will make it to the top. So what's up with that, man? I don't, I don't even know who this clown is. See, I don't either. But the funny thing is, though, it's always awesome when they use a different name. You know, so then they can, it's probably some drizzling shit fucking 50 year old man that couldn't wrestle or still wants to wrestle, but can't wrestle. It's probably, hey, or, or my brother Harry could have slept with his old lady. You never Damn. know. Look, I was thinking, man, it might be dots and I mean, you know, you man undercover. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. He's a clown. He, he got me blocked. I can't believe Johnny blocked you. Of course, I look. I can't say nothing. If I, I'll block, let me ask you this, Carl. Here's my thoughts. I hear all these people talk about like it's unmanly to block a motherfucker. But let me ask you this: If you got, if there's a person in real life that you know does not like you, do you invite them to your house? I'm the wrong one to ask because I'm not going to invite them to my house just so I can whoop the ass. Uh, okay, take that out. Just in general. But no, no, no. I mean, no, I, I get where you're going with that. No, you don't. But it's it's crazy for the biggest mouth around here to block me. Um, I, I've just, man, I've lost all respect for Johnny. I mean, I, I really did. I lost all respect. Uh, we come in, we come in and helped it, helped him. 
you know, help the show. And uh, it was just like a kick in the fucking face, man. It, it's just, I lost all respect for him. I mean, he he's all about, oh, how much money do you have? What do you own? You're a fucking preacher, Johnny. You don't judge people by how much money they have. I mean, it just, he, he tears me up, man, because you can't keep them separate. You can't be a douchebag fucking bullying random fans. Oh, look at this idiot. Look at this piece of trash. Look at this, all this shit. And then on your other page saying, oh, amen, Lord, we love everybody. I mean, he's another one of them that got that heat that you don't want. He's lost friends, lifetime friends over his bullshit. I mean, I, I, I he's a clown, match. man. I have no respect for him. Look, dude, I see the match. They say personal issues make money, draw money. Yeah, but here's Ball the thing. We had personal issues before. See the whole invasion thing with Bluff City and MCW? I was really... I was really getting on their shit, talking shit about Johnny's show. I meant everything I was saying. For sure. I meant what I was saying. But it kind of got flipped into a deal. And then Johnny was supposed to work me. Huh. Then what do you know? We never worked a match. We were supposed to have him for like four or five weeks. Got him there twice. Never worked a match in MCW. He just, and then, and then we go to his show and it's like, we put them over, we put them over our top guys, left us laying, killed us. We go to their show, never once put us over, nothing else. He was just, he's, he, he's lost all my respect, man. He never had much of it in the first place, but. He, he just talks so much shit to people when the truth of the matter, he used to be like, oh, who are you, kid? Nobody knows you. No, Johnny Dodson, these days, more people know me than know him. There it is. Because the last 20 years, he's been sitting on his ass getting fat. I've been out here running running around the Indies wrestling. <laughs> Look, all And now that's fat. a fact. And there I know Johnny it. will see this, and I don't give a shit. You can kiss my ass, Johnny. Hell, hey, I might have to get y'all back together on a face-off, both of y'all at the same time. I don't give a shit. I got plenty of shit to say to him. Look, might be the first head-to-head -head Big Buster uh, matchup, man, face-to-face. -face. I'll put the VS in between y'all. Man, we'll go all out with this shit, dude. Look, Eric's <laughs> back. He says, much love and respect to the whole Clap family. Especially, well, damn it, I lost it. Hold on. Especially Mama East Coast. Wrestling on demand is back. Says Carl, you know me, nothing but love, nothing but love. Carl, you know me. I don't fucking know you. I don't know who you are. So look, M Mark's back. He said uh, I only had to block one wrestling worker after I found out I'm a distant cousin to Mad Dog the Butcher Rashawn and kept on hounding me to contact Butcher for autographs. Yeah, I can see that, dude. Uh, ah, now I'm gonna. You're gonna have to block me because I'm a. <laughs> I'll make up fake profiles and shit. <laughs> Look, wrestling on demands back. Said, let's be real for a second. What is the next? What is next for MCW and all the guys in the locker room? Uh all I could say is nowhere but up. Nowhere yeah. but up, man. Uh, like I said, man, we we're doing. We're trying to get bigger and bigger. Um, you know, there's not many shows that run weekly shows, man. And and we do. We're running weekly. We're running Saturday shows. We're, um, so we're stepping up. I mean, we're 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 the company, man. We're, in my eyes, I, I strongly believe. We're, I mean, we're the company, man. You can get these other shows that run once a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pack the house once a month, yes. But try to do that shit every week. I mean, what we it's hard to run a show every week. It's Man, hard. We've been, we've been talking about that over the last couple of weeks on, on with different guests on the podcast about running weekly. And it is, man. It's hard to top what we did last week every fucking week. Year in and year out, man, it's a whole different monster than trying to run once a month or once every couple of months. Uh, yep. I don't think people realize realize how big of a 
it, it's a lot of mental mental work. Dude. A lot to everything, booking, making sure the guys are there, building. I mean, it's it's a lot of work running running every week. I mean, Look, we, yeah, Look, I read that dumbass comment, Mike. Fuck you. Okay. Damn. What do I you think about you. the Patriots? <laughs> I think they suck right now, but they're still my damn team. Damn, we got football heat too. Uh, we got Johnny Dodson heat. We got football heat. New Rest England Patriots, up. that's my team. It'll always be my team, but damn it. Fuck you, Brady, for leaving. Well, look, I think that's the that's about the way we're going to uh, end this show, Carl. Look, before we get out of here, talk to us about Friday night. Tell everybody what they're going to see and tell everybody what else y'all may have coming up here in the next few weeks, dude. Um, Friday night, man. We also got LA Hustlers, um, versus Tim Grimes and his son Lance. That's his son, right? Actually, I know you know Grimes, he was here around this area for years. You know, he's been gone for a while. He actually stopped wrestling when his son was born, that's why he stopped. And now, what do you know? He's coming back out with his son. The irony in that shit. (laughs) It's awesome, man. I seen him and his son. I seen his son about probably a year ago, maybe even a little more than that, at EIW. He was wrestling there. He started wrestling there a little bit when Derek was up there. And, man, actually, Tim came back and was working there, too, man. Uh, It's pretty cool, man. Uh, We're we're helping. We're trying to help them, man. Uh, they're going against the LA Hustlers. Um, you got Ray Ray and Zach Daniels, which should be a hell of a match. Uh, you got Derek King and Ray Sanders versus Twisted Steel. Be another good match. All four of them can go. I mean, all right. of them can go. And I can't say what, but I'm going to have a big announcement myself Friday. So I'm going to be involved. I'm going to get some shit going and I got a big announcement. Uh, you can't happen. You can't get in there to watch us. You can join us every week live on TikTok. Uh, we got YouTube, MCW, the legacy continues. We got Facebook, um, Instagram coming your way soon. Um, and maybe Roku TV. If we can <laughs> get shit figured out, we want to get it on TV where, we got family and stuff all over the place. Um, we want to get it on TV where people can turn on their TV on a, a set day and, and and watch MCW. So might have to start our own channel first, just put MCW stuff on there and then get some production up and, you know, go from there. So uh, we, we hopefully we'll be getting a commercial and stuff, uh, commercial set up and, and going and stuff like that. We, going to be having somebody come in to record a commercial for us so uh we're doing big things man big things oh yeah mcw man i gotta i have to say look when y'all first took over and the guys first moved to the old old building see i was uh, i was part owner when we moved to the old old building the old, old building is when me and Harry got into it. I helped remodel that whole building. That's when me and Harry got into it, and he fired me. Right, and and that's still, I mean, obviously, brothers, man, shit don't never die all the way, man. I mean, I, trust oh, me, I it's, it, it's not. We're, I mean, we're not really, it, it's not. I mean, it is what it is. He's my brother. I love him. He's a fucking asshole, but I still love him. David, he's my brother. He's an asshole, but I still love him. You know, we're, that's the way we are. We're family. I mean, it, you know, but we're still going to stick together and we're going to do make this show the best we possibly can. So uh, whether we argue, whether we fight, whatever, when it comes down to it, uh, we're getting shit done and we're doing what's best for MCW and not ourselves. Yeah, y'all always do that. I got to admit that. No matter what seems to be going on, y'all always come together for MCW, man. And that's what it's all about in the end, man. Families fight. No matter who you are, we all fight. But what makes you family is you come back together. Look, Mark McGee says, all love from MCW's favorite New Yorker. Enjoy the show tonight, Mark. I appreciate you watching. Nothing but love to you, Mark. 
Yes, sir. I appreciate you interacting. Just with wait, Buster. Just wait, man. I got a I got a twelve year old daughter, be thirteen next month. But I told her she can't start training until she's fourteen. Mm, so yeah. I'm the one. I got two boys, but I got four fucking daughters. So Damn. I'm the one that's going to be putting some girls into this wrestling business. I got my uh, my daughter Carly wants to train. I told her she could start training when she's 14. And then my nine-year-old and my five-year-old are diehard wrestling fans and say they're going to wrestle. So I'm going to have some hey. girls in this business too before it's over with. The clap men, they've had a, uh, a monopoly on it for a long time, man. It's, it's time to bring them girls in there, dude. Put them in the ring. Yeah. She gets to start training when she's 14. She's like, Dad, why 14? I'm like, it's a lot on your body. You can wait until you're 14. I mean, it, you is, can, it, so. it really is a lot. And see, that's something. We, we've talked about it recently about uh, putting kids in the ring. And that's something we've never really discussed is that <laughs> It is rough on your body, and when your body still form in its formidable years of developing and forming and growing, I, I, I'm not so sure it is a good thing to be in there that young, dude, taking bumps and stuff. Because, I mean, you, you know, it's rough. It's, it's like not, said, but at the same time, you condition your body. Well, that's what we talked about. Your body's kind of like a callus. Your body get used to damn near anything if you do it enough, you know. Yeah. Carl, and, and a lot of our bodies are fucked up because we didn't listen. We didn't, you we tried to do everything, every match, all that shit. And at least like with my son, my nephew, my daughters, whatever, at least we can be a part of that process. No, you're not doing this. No, you're not doing this. There's no need of you doing this. You know what I'm saying? So right. you can learn the right way of coming into it without killing your fucking bodies because me and my brothers we thought we had to do every fucking move every match we had to go out there every every match we had to go balls to the wall full force and it was more along the lines that you know psychology i mean with psychology you don't have to do any you don't have to do half that shit to put a match over and that's something me and my brothers learned later on in our in our in our careers after our bodies were already beat up and banged up, you know, so hopefully yeah, we can instill light. that and we can teach them that part of it. So they don't have to do what we did. Right. Smarter, not harder, man. Yes. Uh, smarter, not harder. Look, Mark's back. He says, uh, between now and 14, uh, that's a, that's a good time to work on promo skills. There you yeah. go. And she's going to be going and hitting the gym with me, too. So she's excited about that. So, Well, Carl, dude, as always, it's a blast, man. Anytime we get to talk, it's actually the first time we've had a – we've done this in probably six or seven months now, I would say. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. A, you, you, I was on that 30 minutes or less one or something like that. The last one no, I was on or something. No, you was on, the, you was on the this podcast, but – Hell, you've been on. You and Rocker are probably are probably the two that's running neck and neck for the most appearances, dude. Well, maybe me, you, and Johnny will have to do one, so hey. I can tell him. Yeah, he blocked me, so I can't talk shit to him anymore. I was on like every post, man, talking shit. You're a bully, Johnny. You're a bully, Johnny. Johnny, bullshit. You're a bully. He finally blocked me, man. Look, he I, he blocked me. He blocked me after I told me he's a piece of shit. So I told my old lady. I said I think Carl got a fucking alarm set on Johnny's post because every time, no matter what Johnny said, your ass was right back on him, dude. It's funny because you can share something, nothing. Even Johnny Dotson, after he deleted me as a friend. I wasn't following him or anything, and I still got fucking notifications when he posted shit. The only one. I'm like, Johnny Dotson, Dotson, Johnny posted. I'm like, I'm not friends with him, and I click on it, and I'd see his post. I'm like, why the fuck am I getting these? I'm not following the motherfucker. Nothing else, but I'd get every notification, and then I'm like, all right, <laughs> bullshit. You're a liar. <laughs> ah, dude. It is what it is. I lost all respect for him. I, I mean, I really have. I mean, I ain't got shit for him. 
Well, look, I'm going to send each one of you guys a blank contract. Y'all just sign your names and I'll fill in the rest and we'll make this thing happen. Dude. Hey, that's what we do anyways, ain't it? Yeah, that's pretty much, man. That's the we best. never know what we're signing up for anyways, do we? <laughs> wrestling business in a nutshell my brother that's the way it is man you don't know what the fuck you're signing up for or to <laughs> yeah you're right about that. call my brother you have a great night it's been my pleasure dude and i, I appreciate you giving me your time i appreciate you i'm gonna eat now because my dinner's been done for three dude. hours now i got home late from work and was like oh fuck <laughs> man my old lady be checking out your post where you be cooking all these different ways. She loves that shit, man. She loves man. every time Carl's cooking. She's like, Carl's cooking again. This time he's cooking in the ground. Man, I cook turkeys, ribs, and Boston butts in the ground. Man, it came out awesome. Look, uh, Eric, Eric Hayes says, I guess that means MCW won't be on the Mid-South TV network. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're live on TV every week. <laughs> Every week, just put TikTok on your TV, pull it up. Call, we live go, every week. Go get you some food, man. My old lady gave me the Iggy just a few minutes ago. My supper's ready, too, dude. Oh, like well, I tell said, her I'm sorry I'm not Derek King and you can't talk to me for three hours. Oh, huh. dude. That, hey, I'll tell you what, I was surprised with Derek. I was surprised he opened up as much as he did. Been one of my most favorite podcasts, man. Derek really. Really opened up. I expected Derek to open up, but not like he did, man. Really cool, man. I yeah, because it. he don't he don't do that. He don't do that. And hey, you see, you see the only two companies he put over, right? Right. Hey, go. Derek's our boy, man. He's our family. He helps us out a lot. He's the calm, calm cool head sometimes between the brothers. So uh, nothing but love for Derek, man. That's my boy. I love Derek, too. Carl, take it easy, my friend. Yes, sir. Nothing but love. Y'all have a good night. You, too. All right, y'all. You seen it right there. MCW Call Clap every single Friday night. Osceola, Arkansas, Mid-Southern Championship Wrestling. If you're anywhere close, go check it out. This company has been in business for 30 straight years. Non-stop. Go check them out. Guys, tomorrow night. I'm back with the TriStar Wrestling, guys. They got a big show coming up in Hohen Wall, Tennessee, this Saturday night, and we're going to run down the card. There's no telling who might show up on this show, so you better check it out. And then Thursday night, like always, I'm back with the Premier Pro Wrestling crew. We always have a blast. We always run down the card, and you never know what we're going to talk about. Be sure to check us out both nights, 7 p.m. Guys, Thank all y'all so much for tuning in, and I appreciate everybody that interacted. Till tomorrow night, I'll see you later. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement Everything I do so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast I can roast, I can gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time, you're delirious Mysterious, because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains that last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah now that I've been put through hell I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement